So with that, I'll stop sharing my screen and I'm going to turn it over to Lauren Kramer. Lauren is a research associate with the USDA Southwest Climate Hub. So Lauren. Hello, I'm Lauren Kramer with the USDA Southwest Climate Hub. And today I'm gonna to give a presentation on, our, on a literature synthesis we put together on what we know about soil and biomass carbon in New Mexico. Greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide can be reduced in the atmosphere by emission reduction or sequestration into different terrestrial, oceanic or freshwater ecosystems via photosynthesis. The process and activities that remove CO2 from the atmosphere are known as carbon sinks and provide potential offsets for greenhouse gas emissions. Major carbon sinks exist in bodies of water, biomass, and soils. Management practices and land use changes can lead to changes in these sinks. Carbon can be added, lost or altered within these sinks with certain management practices and land use changes. This provides an opportunity for land managers to help reduce emissions while improving ecosystem function and quality with potential for financial incentive. In the semi-arid to arid Southwest United States, carbon sequestration may provide pathways to reducing greenhouse gas emissions with the potential for financial incentives for maintaining or increasing sequestration. There is continued need to estimate and document the carbon sequestration potential of differing lands to minimize greenhouse gas emissions. Efforts to establish a carbon bank and provide financial incentives for carbon sequestration compound the need to estimate carbon sequestration, as well as the sequestration potential of differing land use and management. The first step in evaluating the financial viability of carbon markets for producers and land managers in New Mexico is the scientific synthesis of our knowledge regarding the existing carbon stocks. We aim to enhance producers' ability to evaluate current carbon storages and future carbon sequestration potential on New Mexico lands to support economic and environmental land management decision-making by identifying the range of baseline carbon sequestration on different land types across New Mexico and evaluating impacts of alternate land management or land change on carbon sequestration potential. Carbon sequestered in soil is known as soil organic carbon or SOC and is important in greenhouse gas mitigation. We found nine studies in New Mexico with measured soil carbon values. The USDA National Resources Conservation Service Soil Science Division initiated the Rapid Carbon Assessment Project, or RACA, in 2010 with the objective of measuring a baseline inventory of soil carbon stocks for the United States. The project also assessed carbon across different land use and soil types. This graphic on the right here shows the average soil carbon stock at a five centimeter depth across land use in New Mexico. Forest land in orange and pasture land in gray have the most soil carbon out of the RACA study. Aside from soil, carbon is also sequestered in living vegetation. During photosynthesis, plants intake atmospheric CO2 and carbon is stored within the plant tissue. This carbon stored in plants is known as biomass carbon stock. We found five US Forest Service baseline carbon assessments in the Gila, Carson, Cibola, Tonto and Santa Fe National Forests. Disturbances to soil or management impacts can cause soil carbon values to change. Soil carbon is affected most when land is converted from one land use to another, such as forest to cropland or vice versa. By managing land to enhance and not degrade soil, carbon sequestration in turn is increased. Agricultural soils are especially recognized as a potential carbon sink, and certain management practices like conservation tillage have been found to reduce CO2 emissions. Conservation practices and proper land management can lead to increased carbon sequestration, while mismanagement and disturbance can lead to carbon loss and a release of CO2 back into the atmosphere. As with land use type, soil carbon can vary significantly across the landscape. Aside from varying from place to place, 
soil carbon can have higher or lower variabilities in different regions. Soil carbon also varies across different vegetation types. With desertification in the Southwest, grasslands are transitioning to shrublands. Significant differences in SOC or soil carbon have been found under grasslands and shrublands in the Sevieta National Wildlife Refuge. More carbon was found in the surface soil under shrubs than under grass. There are data gaps specifically for New Mexico as carbon stocks are estimated on a national scale, but not as thoroughly regionally or locally. The lack of long-term consistent measured data makes it difficult to know how much carbon is truly available and how much can potentially be earned from carbon credits in the event of a carbon market. Carbon banking in New Mexico could provide a monetary incentive for land managers to maintain and restore land to avoid soil carbon loss and possibly increase carbon sequestration. To consider a viable and profitable carbon bank, baseline carbon values need to be further determined and assessed. Thanks for listening. Sierra Heimel is a research associate with the USDA Southwest Climate Hub. And Sierra has been investigating available decision support tools. To, uh, for producers to use when they're trying to evaluate whether or not um, a carbon market might be some a viable option for them. Sierra. An overview of soil organic carbon stock in New Mexico. What do we know about carbon stock in New Mexico? To begin, Carbon stock is partitioned between above ground carbon stored in plant matter, referred to as biomass carbon, and below ground carbon in soil, referred to as soil organic carbon. Soil organic carbon is a measure of the carbon sequestered in the soil, whereas biomass carbon is a measure of the carbon sequestered in living vegetation. Biomass carbon stored above ground is more susceptible to loss from the land due to wildfire, erosion, or deforestation. This means that aside from being more sustainable, soil carbon also represents a higher accumulation of carbon than from biomass carbon in New Mexico. Additionally, biomass carbon in New Mexico has only been approximated within the national forests, leaving large data gaps making our analysis of biomass carbon in relation to other land use types difficult. For these reasons, I will be focusing on New Mexico's soil organic carbon stock alone. The USDA Natural Resources Conservation Services Soil Science Division initiated the Rapid Carbon Assessment Project, also known as RACA, in 2010 to capture information on the carbon content of soils across the continuous United States. The project also assessed carbon across different land use, land cover, and soil types. Most of the existing tools, data, and resources for carbon sequestration are focused on the national level. This leaves an unclear estimate of potential for New Mexico's soil organic carbon stock. And so part of the focus of this study was to quantify New Mexico's existing stock data by land use types. To begin, we reviewed RACA's sampling methodologies where they sampled over 32,000 pedants across over 6,000 sites in the United States. About 220 of those sites were located in New Mexico. A pedon being the smallest unit of soil that contains all the soil horizons of a particular soil type. Here, a soil scientist extracts a bulk density sample from a pastureland site using the core method. The sample is trimmed, bagged, and labeled. The bulk density values then can give us a better idea of how much total carbon exists in the soil. Soil organic carbon is taken from measuring the total carbon in a sample and subtracting the inorganic carbon component. 
Soil organic carbon stocks are then calculated by multiplying the soil horizon bulk density with the soil organic carbon concentration. This can be summed to fixed depth increments to give us stock values up to different depth intervals. For the purpose of this study, we sum to 30 centimeters. This is a map showing site sampling locations across New Mexico and their relative soil organic carbon stock values summed to a 30 centimeter depth. This is also a visual aid for relative soil organic concentrations in relation to land use and land cover. One thing that is evident is that soil carbon varies dramatically across a landscape due to variations in topography, bedrock, vegetation, or past management practices. A visual analysis of this map reveals that the largest stock values are sequestered in evergreen forests. Moderate stock values occur along major rivers and in croplands. The smallest stock values appear in shrubland or rangeland areas. The yellow, air, the yellow arrows depicted here represent the land use types from the RACA data set that will be used for comparison in my analysis. A more quantitative analysis of soil organic carbon stock was measured and averaged for the preceding six major land use types in New Mexico, those being cropland, forest, pastureland, rangeland, wetland, and conservation reserve program land. Forests sequester the most carbon in megagrams per hectare, followed by pastureland, cropland, rangeland, wetland, and CSP land. A ratio of megagrams of carbon per centimeter per hectare were calculated for each land use type, revealing the same pattern of sequestration seen for the average stock values, with forests containing the highest ratios of carbon per area and CSP land the least. The table on the right demonstrates the percentage of carbon stock contained within each land use type, and these do not correspond to the highest sequestering land use types seen in the left table. This is due to an uneven sampling of land uses. However, rangelands officially contain the highest percentage of carbon stock for the state of New Mexico compared to any other land use type. In conclusion, soil organic carbon stock varies greatly across land use types in New Mexico. Soil carbon content is highest in virgin soils under grass or forests, and is lost or decreased when those soils are converted to cropland or pastures. Changes in land use define soil health and soil organic carbon stock. Disturbances to soil or management impacts can cause soil carbon values to change. Soil carbon is affected most when land is converted from one land use to another. Finally, more data is certainly needed to assess New Mexico's true soil organic carbon stock. There are data gaps specific to New Mexico since carbon stocks are estimated on a national scale, but not at such a high resolution with region or state-based areas. This lack of long-term consistently measured data makes it difficult to know how much carbon is truly available and how much can potentially be earned from carbon credits in the event of a carbon market making more long-term and precise measurements a necessity for a success successful carbon market. I'll leave you with this last slide, depicting once again, the National Soil Organic Carbon Stock Approximations, the large data gaps in New Mexico, and the notion that soil carbon is the greatest store of carbon on rangelands which make up almost half of the world's land surface and sequester 20% of the world's soil organic carbon content. Thank you.